we've got a, a pretty good crew. My dad was a big Stevie Ray Vaughan and Jimi Hendrix uh, fan. So I remember growing up watching a lot of videos and listening to a lot of recordings of that, and so I always wanted to play. I started when I was uh, 13, 14, playing bass, come from a really musical family. My first involvement with music was in church. I studied percussion from middle school through college, actually, and played tuba. Picked up guitar in middle school because we had an acoustic laying around. A friend of mine had a bass. I actually wanted to play bass at first, and then he told me, no, I'm the bassist. You can't play bass. So I figured, all right, I'll pick up the thing that looks the most like the bass, and that happened to be the guitar. Never had any lessons. Kind of, you know, was total power chord guy. Um, was in like a Nirvana cover band, <laughs> all that good stuff. Uh, Note Tracker transcribes all the music that all the guitars and basses are doing in a given song and also creates a progression that will take someone from the first time they've ever played guitar, get them through the song and having fun, and eventually get them playing the entire song note to note as it was recorded. The way we note track a song is we just uh, load in an mp3, the, the game just knows uh, what the notes are, and then we just uh, sit back for two weeks and do nothing. Uh. <laughs> Uh, no, for real, it's actually a very time-consuming process. And it's quite the endeavor. Uh, we get the official assets from the licensors, we get the wave, the audio file, and then we have to first tempo map, it's beat mapping. And once we're done with that, we have to sit and listen to the recording and track every single note uh, from, in every single position. And that, it takes a considerable amount of time. Then we enter into a, uh, a review process. We use all the tools at our disposal to, to get it right and then we go in and polish, 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 and double check and re-review, come back and do it again. And that's, that's really where all of this experience that everybody on the team has comes into play. We got guys who come from a strong jazz background. We got guys who are heavy into metal, heavy metal. We got guys who are uh, studio technical guys who know how to go in and make a record, make it sound super pro and polished. We come from the conservatory setting ourselves, mostly. We both studied composition. Born on the Bayou, not, not a technically difficult song to play, really straightforward, but it was really, really hard to note track because it's this kind of loose, strummy style of playing. There's this, this sort of difficult balance you have to reach between like, okay, here's exactly what's going on note for note in the song versus here is something that it makes sense to teach a person to play. Something we've really tried to do in both games, but, but especially in Rocksmith 2014, is to make it one global, unified sound experience. And the audio design really has a lot to do with gluing that all together. At the end of the first game, uh, we were, again, looking for ways to make it better. And one thing that uh, we wish we would have done more is kind of give somebody more of a space to learn how to improvise and kind of create their own sound. And so we thought, well, what if we make AI musicians? So we started with a drummer. We started with just uh, one drummer that we played some stuff, the drummer listened to you and played along with you. The next step was we made a bassist and a guitar player and organ player. We kind of saw like, yes, this is, this is the arena we were talking about. So that's what session mode is. In our, in our audio engine, we actually made a sampler. I said, well, there's no way I could do all this. This is ridiculous. It took me two days to do one riff, and we need like thousands. Immediately did I realize that we needed composers. And so we got six guys. Um, they make all the riffs that are gonna power the sampler instrument. We, we had this big sheet of all of the different instruments that we're gonna be writing for. There'd be an example of like a song or a band and a song title or something to look at. And then when we'd actually get to those, he'd send us a few more songs. Yeah. Or we'd totally not listen to them and just do our own thing. It's interesting to not have the kind of standard writing process that you would think would work. It's kind of like the tested, tried and true things don't work all the time, so there's a lot of experimentation at the beginning. Like I remember I was working on the blues guitar and there were things for when it would play chords to make it really sound sort of realistic, it, it needed to be kind of slopped up. So all of the chords that I ended up writing, I ended up zooming way in and like 
moving each note up and down so you could really hear if it was an upstroke or a downstroke and delaying the different strings so you could hear each string hit. Coming from like a general uh, album mixing or like song mixing perspective, you have one guitar, it's playing at one velocity, you have one bass, you have one drum kit, maybe you have a keyboard, but they're not, they're not moving targets, they're not going anywhere. So you can confidently say, yeah, I'm gonna filter this thing here and here, give some room to the bass here. You can sculpt this thing and it's not, it's not getting away from you. It's like a painting. Session mode, uh, It's a painting it's while like you're it, on acid. <laughs> Mixing session mode was the coolest mixing project I've ever done in my life. Okay, all of a sudden we have all these instruments that need to work sonically with one another because you can pick any combination. It needs to match what you're doing. And as you get more intense, the volumes need to come up. And that, that was just quite a beast of a task, but like I said, it was just so much fun. There's a lot of people who know a lot of different things about a lot of different areas of music, and there's also a shared common vocabulary about music so that we can all talk and understand and know what we're saying and communicate that to the players so that they understand how musicians talk to each other. Uh, mine is not scotch. <laughs>